Alright, good morning. Uh, nice sunny morning. Um, and we're looking at graphs of modulus functions following our live lesson yesterday. I said I'd just go through tactics I use to draw the graphs. So I hope this helps. Um, so two questions from 2G. So 2G question 8. So this question here. So they give us the function, they just give us the graph. Now that's all very well but there's no points marked on the graph. So you can't answer half the questions unless you know where it crosses the axis and stuff like that. Minimum points. So it's very useful to quickly sketch out what to do. So we want to draw the graph of, so I'm going back and forth here, we want to draw a graph of two thirds of the modulus of x minus one minus seven. Okay. So we start within the modulus and we'll draw the normal graph of x minus one. There it is. Now important point is to mark on the axes, okay, where it crosses the x and the y axis each time. That's really going to help you. So we draw a graph of y equals x minus 1. Now we want the modulus of y equals x minus 1. So we get everything that's below the axes here. So everything that is below here, and we flip all of that up. Now because we flip it up, this is minus 1, this is 1 down. When this whole thing flips up, it's going to cross at 1. So that's why it goes to that. Again, marking on where it crosses. So we flipped everything up to get the modulus. Our next step is we want 2 thirds of that modulus. Well, 2 thirds multiplied by the function of x is a stretch, is a vertical stretch. Now if we're stretching this graph 2 thirds scale factor, we're actually going to be effectively not stretching it but that way, but stretching it that way. Okay, so that one becomes two thirds. So it still goes through this point here, so it stretches out this way two thirds. Okay, so we've now got two thirds modulus of x minus one, and our final stage is two thirds modulus of x minus one minus seven. So we're going to get this entire graph and we're simply going to drop it by 7. So if I drop it by 7, its minimum point now, we can see, is minus 7. And this 2 thirds, take away 7, gives us minus 6 and 1 third. Now, a lot of time also useful to know where it crosses the x-axis. If we wanted to, oh sorry, it asks us the range. So, it asks us the range, and the range is where it is on the y-axis, so the range is greater than or equal to minus 7. So this exists for y is greater than or equal to minus 7, okay? Or the function of x is greater than or equal to minus 7. So if we wanted these actual two points, all you do is just solve this equals 0. So you want this whole thing to equal 0. Rearrange it to get just the modulus bit. Okay, so add 7 to both sides, multiply by 3, divided by 2, and you get this. x minus 1 is 21 over 2, which is 10.5. Then you just, because it's modulus, you look at two solutions. One where x minus 1 is 10.5, so x is 11.5, and one where it's minus x minus 1 is 10.5. So rearrange all that, you get x is minus 9.5. So 11.5 and minus 9.5. Perfect. And then you can get on and do the rest of the question. I won't go through that because it's explained really well in exam solutions. Right, so next question we're going to do, very similar, is question 10. So we have this graph here. Um, mx is minus 4 modulus x plus 3 plus 7. Right, so again, you know, we want key points on that graph really. We want the maximum, we might want where it crosses the axis and stuff. It's just nice to know how they actually got it. So, first thing we do is we go inside the modulus because it's this x plus 3 bit here. Uh, we plot x plus 3. There it is, marking on the axes. Where's my pencil? There and there. Step 2, we want the modulus, so we take everything here below the uh, positive y and reflect it back up so it's going to become that again marking on the axes key points that's 3 and minus 3 
Now we want uh, oh, step three. Okay, step three, we want minus the modulus of x plus three. Well, when I take minus of a function, I just get the function and flip it around the x-axis. So step two was this, crosses at minus three and it's three there. We flip that, we still keep the minus three there and the three becomes minus three. The whole graph's flipped on the x-axis. Now step four, we want minus four of that modulus. As we saw in the last question, the minus four will be a stretch this way of factor four. So when it's stretching, this will stay exactly as it is. This will move down by a factor of four to be minus 12. The final thing we're gonna do is, where is it? Is we want all of that plus seven. So to add seven to it, we get the whole graph and move it up seven. So here's what we've got. So when we add seven to it, our maximum is gonna be at seven. Minus 12 plus seven is five. So we end up with this. Their graph where maximum is seven and it crosses at minus five. Again, if we wanted these two key points here, we would solve this, the whole function equals zero. So rearrange, take away seven from both sides, divide both sides by minus four, and you get x plus three is seven over four because the minus and minus cancel. Uh, so one solution is x plus three is seven over four, x is minus 1.25. Another solution is at minus x plus three is seven over four, so rearrange all that, x is minus 4.75. Then you just check, you always check, don't you? Check, do these numbers make sense? Minus 1.25 and minus 4.75. Looks good to me. Um, that's it really, so goodbye from me and Sunny Townhoe.